If you find this video useful, remember to click like and subscribe. And for more information about all our resources and revision courses that we do, go to alevelmathsrevision.com. In this video, bridging the gap between GCSE and A-level maths, we're going to be having a look at straight lines. And we're going to spread this over two weeks because there's quite a lot to know about straight lines. Um, not only will we recap what you learned at GCSE, but we're going to try and push that up to an A-level standard as well, just to give you a little bit of a head start. So, straight lines. And the first thing we're going to have a look at is the gradient of a straight line. So the gradient of a straight line is a number that measures the direction and the slope of the line. So that's what gradient means. So in order to find the gradient of a line, you've probably been taught at GCSE that the formula is change in y over change in x equals m. And m stands for gradient. We're going to slightly change that at A level. So the formula is going to be exactly the same but we're going to use different symbols instead of changing y over changing x we're going to use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 that's if you haven't seen this formula already where x1 y1 and x2 y2 are points on the line So let's put that into practice. Let's show what this actually means. So this example question, find the gradient of the line that passes through the points minus two, three, and seven minus two. So x1, y1 is one point on the line. So I'm gonna say this is coordinate x1, and the corresponding y coordinate, we're gonna call y1. Likewise, we're gonna call this x2, and we're gonna call this y2. So the gradient, m is y2 minus y1 so minus 2 minus 3 over x2 minus x1 7 minus minus 2 and don't forget that double minus equals so minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5 and 7 double minus 2 is 9 so minus 5 ninths is the gradient let's have a look at what would have happened if we just swap the points x1 y1 and x2 y2 round so let's say that we decided we wanted this one here to be x1 and y1 and this one here to be x2 and y2 and see if it comes up with a different answer so let's do that in a different color as well so m equals so y2 minus y1 now it's 3 minus minus 2 over and then x2 minus x1 is minus 2 minus 7 minus 2 minus 7 which gives us 5 over minus 9, which again is minus 5 ninths. So no matter which point you decide to be point 1, the x1, y1, and point 2, the x2, y2, you'll always end up with the same answer. So as a key summary, we can say that the gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where x1, y1 and x2, y2 are points on the line. And that's a key formula that you're going to need to remember. And that's the way at A-level that you should present your answers. That's what's expected in all the mark schemes. So let's now move on to the idea of how to find the gradient in other ways. So let's have a look at the form y equals mx plus c of a line. And I've no doubt that you'll come across this before. So y equals, let's say, 3x plus 2. Well, this number here, I'm sure you know, is the gradient of the line. And this number here is the y-intercept. However, presented with a question like this, then you may or may not be so familiar. So find the gradient of the line with equation 2x plus 3y minus 7 equals 0. Well, the key here is to rearrange it so that it says y equals something x plus something, y equals mx plus c. So I take everything to the other side and leave the y on the left-hand side. I get 3y equals minus 2x plus 7. So I've taken that 2x to the other side. I've taken that minus 7 to the other side by adding 7. To give 3y equals minus 2x plus 7. So that implies that now if we divide by 3 to make it say y equals, we get y equals minus 2 thirds x minus 2x over 3 plus 7 over 3. Therefore, we can say the gradient is the number in front of x, which is minus two-thirds. 
So therefore, m equals minus two thirds. And that's a common question that you could be asked at the start of a paper in A level. So now having touched upon the equation of a straight line, let's move on to that now. So you've just seen the equation y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. But at A level, we we'll are like you to learn a new but equivalent equation for a straight line. And that's this here, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So here, m is the gradient. And you knew that from before. And x1, y1 is any point on the line. And this equation's better because here, that was just the y-intercept. We could only use this equation if we had the y-intercept. Yes, we can find the y-intercept out using it, but you need, to, you need to put the effort in to do that. Here, this equation here takes any point on the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example now and do it both ways and hopefully help you make your mind up that this way here is far superior and the way you should be doing it. So this question here, find the equation of the line which has gradient 4, m equals 4, and passes through the point 2, 3. So if I use this formula here, I'm told in the question that the gradient's 4. So that means the equation of the line is y equals 4x plus c. So from that now, I need to find what the y-intercept c is. And I can find that out by subbing in the point 2, 3. So let x equal 2 y equal 3, which means that y equals 4x, 4 lots of 2, plus c, which means that 3 equals 8 plus c, which means that c equals minus 5. Therefore, we can conclude that y equals 4x minus 5 is the answer. Now, I think that's just a bit long-winded. Let's go back and try and use this other formula here. So the y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. So again, we know the gradient's 4. And we've got x1, y1, the point that we're given on the line, is 2, 3. So let's shove it straight in the formula, which means that y minus the point, the y coordinate of the point, y minus y1, equals m x minus the x coordinate of the point which is 2 multiply the bracket out which gives us y minus 3 equals 4x minus 8 then add 3 to both sides to get y equals 4x minus 5 and there's our answer and we've done it in just a little bit less working so i'm convinced that this way is the way to do it so make a note of that equation that's one that will be introduced to your day level and one that your teachers will expect you to use because it is far superior. And I'll give you another example of why it's far superior. So this question here, find in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero, where a, b and c are integers, the equation of the line that passes through 6, 5 and minus 1, 7. Now this looks a bit new. Because normally, you've given equations of a line in the form y equals mx plus c. But actually, sometimes at A-level, it's preferred to have it in this format here. So let's go for this question. And remember, we write the answer in this form, not y equals mx plus c. Notice that we're not actually given the gradient here, so it's our job to work it out as well. So we're going to use the formula that we've just learned. So gradient equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and it doesn't matter which point we decide to be point 1 and point 2 as long as we're consistent so i'm going to make this x1 y1 here the second one minus 1 7 so 7 minus 5 y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 equals 7 minus 5 is 2 over minus 1 minus 6 is minus 7. 
So we've got the gradient there. And already we can see the gradients of fractions. So y equals mx plus c will be a bit of a nightmare using fractions like this. Uh, we'll see why this equation gets round using fractions. And now let's take a point on the line. Now we'll get the same answer if we use either of these points. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and avoid negative numbers and use this point here. But it will give the same answer no matter which point you use. You might want to try using the other point as well just to see. So here we've got x1, y1. The point on the line that we're going to use is 6, 5. We've got the gradient was 2 over minus 7. Or we can call that minus 2 sevenths. Which implies that, then using the formula that we learned before, which was y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, learn that. So y minus y1, which is 5, equals m minus 2 sevenths x minus x1. And the x1 was 6. Now the great thing we can do here, which we can't if you use the y equals mx plus c, is times both sides by 7 to avoid using fractions at all. So we times both sides by 7, we get 7y minus 35 equals minus 2 x minus 6. And again, look what we've done. We've avoided fractions altogether. Let's multiply the brackets out. 7y minus 35 equals minus 2x plus 12. And try to put it into that form where all the variables are on the left hand side and including all the numbers as well. So add 2x. That means we get 2x plus 7y minus 35 equals 12. And if we take 12 from both sides, that gives us 2x plus 7y minus 47 equals 0. And that's the format that we're asked to have it in. Something x plus something y plus something equals 0. But they all have to be integers. So that's why I multiplied by 7 there to make sure that both sides had integers on them. So let's have a look at an exam style question before we finish. So there it is there. And it says A is the point 2, 7 and B is the point minus 1, minus 2. Find the equation of the line through A parallel to the line Y equals 4X minus 5. Given your answer in that form there, Y equals MX plus C. So A is that point. So what I'm going to do is write X1, Y1 equals 2, 7. And the gradient of the line we need... Well, we're told it's parallel to y equals 4x minus 5, and that word parallel means has the same gradient as. So you might want to make a note of that. Parallel means has the same gradient as. So we can read out, uh, read off from that line that the gradient is 4. So using the equation of our newly found equation of a straight line, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Multiplying it out, y minus 7 equals 4x minus 8. Which implies that y equals 4x minus 1. And there's our equation in the form that we'll ask for, y equals mx plus c. Part 2, calculate the length of AB, given your answer in simplified third form. So this isn't something we've covered, but this is something that's on the A-level syllabus. So what we can do, we can picture it as follows. So let's just draw a rough diagram of the two points. So we've got B here, which is minus 1, minus 2. And A is up and right at 2, 7. What we can do, picture that as a straight line, we can turn this into a right angle triangle. Like that. So the x distance from minus 1 up to 2 is 3. Try and write that properly there. 3. And from minus 2 up to 7 is distance 9. Therefore, the length of AB, which we denote by putting two bars either side of AB, equals square root of 3 squared plus 9 squared 
which is the square root of 90. But it asks for it in simplified third form. So we're going to, need to simplify that third. So that's root 9, root 10, which is 3 root 10. So that's us done for this tutorial. Um, we'll be looking next time at perpendicular lines, and we'll be looking at that in a problem-solving context. So until then... For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.